Welcome to Same Spit, Different Face TV, where my opinions is facts, and if you don't like my opinions, you can start your own podcast, and it's free, so don't forget to spit on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification. Now, Spit Squad, FBG Duck Estate made a statement about Lil Durk arrest. Now, y'all have to remember that Mama Duck basically filed a lawsuit stating that, you know, Lil Durk is liable for what happened to uh, FBG Duck. And when we look at the situation, right, and we see all of the stuff that came out in this indictment, I believe that she knew that this indictment was coming and she wanted to get her um stuff out basically to be able to have her lawsuit running at the same time as this case run and if this case if dirt get found guilty of this case she's 1000 percent going to win and then i think after she wins you have the um situation of uh, actually trying to collect the money who knows how much money will actually be left after um he try to fight this federal case if he have to get lawyer for himself lawyer for the other people on the case i mean if you smart you get lawyers for the other people on the case because you want your lawyer to be able to speak to their lawyers and figure out exactly what they saying, what they doing, if they cooperating or not. And in that instance, once you find out somebody removed the lawyer away from them and they don't have a lawyer no more, then you know that they're not cooperating. But I think another thing that people not really paying attention to before I actually read the statement that um, FBG Duck Mom and the estate released um, you have to understand that with this case going how it go, the O Block Six could possible or the O Block Five could po- haven't been sentenced yet, right? And so maybe that was the reason why they didn't go to sentencing yet, because now the the feds can probably use this for leverage for them. Hey, you guys are facing life for X, Y, and Z. We don't want y'all look into this situation and let's see what's going on from here. And then you could have a possibility where the O Block 5 could say, hey, we went through this trial. People didn't hold us down. They held some people down, not the other ones. Once we got through the part where, you know, we were found guilty, people snatched their lawyers back. They wasn't trying to help us with appeal. You know what? I do know something that I want to tell. So this can actually get tricky. Now, the statement regarding the incident of Dirk Banks, a.k.a. Lil Dirk, it we have learned that Dirk Banks, also known as Lil Dirk, has been formally indicted in connection with murder for hire plot in the Central District of California. The conduct alleged in the incident mirrors the pattern of violence activities that we have seen repeatedly from Lil Dirk and members of his organization, only the family OTF. This includes the 2019 shooting in Atlanta, the 2020 murder for hire of Carlton Weekly, known as FBG Duck, and now the 2022 murder for hire of Taekwon Bowman. Now, y'all have to pay attention to the type of words that they use in here. You have to remember that the feds are trying to say that OTF is a criminal organization. So when they made their statement, they said Lil Dirk and the members of on I mean members of his organization. So um the lawyer who wrote this out wanted to point that out. Remember I told y'all Mama Duck is going for a lawsuit, the estate, and obviously the estate, the estate includes uh mama duck and the kids but uh um the incident reveals underscores a troubling and long-standing pattern despite repeated warnings and numerous violent incidents record label alamo records sony music entertainment inc empire distribution inc and universal music group recording inc Interscope Records choose to fuel, finance, and develop brands with Lil Durk, OTF, and King Von underrated by overwhelming evidence of violence criminal activity. The federal indictment alleges that credit cards associated with OTF and private jets were used to help coordinate the murder of TB, underscoring the extensive resources funneled through the OTF record label to fuel these violent acts. This highlights a significant failing by the record label which have knowingly emboldened and benefited from the conduct opting to look the other way in favor of profit. This indictment brings us one step closer to justice for all those affected by the violent acts perpetuated by OTF, Lil Durk, and his co-conspirators. It is time that record labels be held accountable for their role in enabling the conduct by continuously financing and promoting artists despite being on notice of 
repeated evidence of criminal activity by individuals signed to their labels. We stand resolved in pursuing justice for the victims and holding all responsible parties to account, including those in the music industry who have turbocharged this cycle of violence. Very truly yours, Denny Zulu Law Group LTD. Now, for those of y'all who wasn't able to follow what they basically saying in that lawsuit, they want to hold the record labels accountable as well. And now that's where you get the real money from. So when you hear things like uh, music industry, when you hear things like embolden, when you hear things like uh, fueling the beef, when you hear things like funneling money through the OTF company. Well, when you look at that, they basically saying, hey, if it wasn't for uh, Sony, uh, if it wasn't for empire, if it wasn't for these people giving these people checks, it wouldn't be a murder for hire. And then when you look at the situation, right, I know a lot of y'all may say, well, the record label is not responsible for what he do with his money. The record label is not responsible for what he do with his money. But if the record label know that he has issues with other people, if the record label know that he has beef, if the record label know that he's talking about murders, uh, even if they just speculate, right, and they giving him money for it, um, you can always get caught up. And we see this a lot of times. We see uh, guys who get big sports contracts. They end up giving their homie $5,000. They homie ended up going and buying whatever type of drugs they buy or whatever type of gu guns. They do a criminal activity, and then they say, well, where did he get the money from to do this? And then they look to that athlete or they look to that uh, club promoter or whoever gave him the money, and now that person is tied up in it because they saying, if it wasn't for you giving them the money, it would have never happened. Now, it's going to be some other people who going to come on the other stance and say, well, the record label is just giving these people opportunities. They're not responsible for their behavior. One, they are giving them opportunities. Two, they're not responsible for their behavior. But like I said, when somebody is committing crimes around you, you are responsible for it. And I think... um. I think the saying is like ignorance is no excuse for not knowing the law or something like that. And essentially what that means is that you can't go to court and say, oh, I didn't know it was illegal to stab this person for no reason. So I shouldn't be held accountable for the law. That's not how the law works. The law just falls under that. So I definitely think that eventually she's going to get a big payday. Um, what I can actually see happening is expect, I think the label might have been like not even taking her serious at first. But once this come out, I can see the label possibly just trying to um, not not necessarily sign with her, but basically doing a deal that takes them out of the indictment. So the lawyer may go to the label or, or the label lawyers may reach out to the lawyer and say, hey, let's sit down. Let's try to come to a reasonable number. We'll sign out with y'all and then but we'll sign an NDA where you can't speak about it. Now, why would the label want them to sign an NDA? Because we got to look at the Diddy situation. Once you make a lawsuit settlement with one person, anybody who's ever had any issues with you, they can now start filing a, a lawsuit. So let's just say from the Diddy situation perspective, let's just say Diddy has some consensual run ins with a lady, but he never called her back or he told this lady, yo, I'm going to end up uh, putting you on this song. But he never put that lady on that song. But that lady has proof that she was around Diddy. Well, she can reach out to Diddy and say, hey, uh, you did X, Y, Z to me. I need you to settle out with me. And if you don't, I'll take you to court and get my money that way. Well, remember, the whole thing to it is that Diddy would have never even did anything with this woman. But it puts him in a position once he settled out for everybody to start coming out the woodwork. So the NDA for the labels would be so she couldn't speak about it. So she couldn't come out and say, oh, yeah, uh, the label gave me a hundred million because guess what? Now. Um, any artist that has put out a song that was disrespecting their op or any artist that put out a song and somebody from the other side ended up getting killed. Now that's like the label was damn near responsible for it. And now you have all of these kids who may have died, um, as a product of the beef of somebody who ended up signing 
with a major record label coming forward and that puts the record label at a disadvantage. Now, what does this do to hip hop or at least drill music in the future? This means that if this, if, if the label publicly gets found guilty of this, what you can see that the label is kind of stepping away from hip hop. Now, when they look at hip hop, you looking at Drake, you looking at Kendrick Lamar, you looking at, um, I can't even remember the white boy name. Um, Jack Harlow, you looking at people like that. They 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 moving towards that genre of hip hop because they don't want to deal with this. So in the future, it may be less opportunities for people who come from adverse backgrounds, from people who come from violent backgrounds, for people who may have been in trouble, for people who name may have been sullied. And you can see more of a sports approach when and when I say sports ap approach, when people are heading to college, man, they have a board, right? And they have a board. The board is red, yellow, and green. And so if you have a troubled background, but you're trying to uh, clean yourself up, you got good grades, you stay out of trouble, but uh, you may hang around a few guys that get in trouble, they'll give you a yellow. So that means, all right, depending on how good he is, depending on what his mindset is, we'll sit down with him, we'll explain to him what we expect out of him. And if we feel like he not going to do that, we just going to stop recruiting him. Then you have red. And what do I, what does red mean? Red means stop. Don't go. We not recruiting him. So this is the guys who may be a top talent, but they get in trouble with the law. Um, they've been in and out of jail. They don't go to their classes. They teachers don't like them. Um, they've been in fights in school. And that changed even more once we saw Aaron Hernandez go to jail. Now we notice that they're not giving players chances. Players in college who would have got a chance before what happened to Aaron Hernandez, they're not even giving them a chance now because all of that reflects poorly on the organization. And if, if, if that person does something, like let's just say if that person, uh, like, so here's a good example of it. Aaron Hernandez, we know he got found guilty for killing one of his friends. Now, let's just say if that friend would have went to one of the higher ups in the organization and said, hey, Aaron Hernandez has been threatening me. He said he going to do something to me. Or if he went to that organization and said, hey, I don't feel safe around Aaron Hernandez. And that organization wouldn't have reported that to the police or that organization would have just swept it under the rug. And then Aaron Hernandez would have killed him. Well, the organization can be held liable for that because they knew something about it and they didn't do something about it. So uh, it, it the, the landscape of music is going to change drastically. And I don't even think it's going to be over the next 10 years. I think it's going to be over the next five years. And I think it's going to happen overnight. And then when we look at the um, the surgence of women artists in the game, I think that also has something to do with the violence in music. Yes, women, uh, it costs more to have a woman artist. You have to get hair. You have to get makeup. You have to get very expensive clothes, shoes, cars. They have to, like, and, and they be high maintenance. You know, where you can take a guy and you can fly him and 30 of his friends to another state for maybe $5,000. You may fly a girl somewhere and it may be $10,000 for only five of them because she got... She got five or six bags she going with her. She got her stylist. She got her makeup artist. She got her PR person. Then she don't want to sit in coach. She want to sit in first class. So all of that stuff can play a thing. But the key to it is that uh, you continue to make artists, you continue to make money with that artist longer. I mean, a woman artist because she's not in jail and she's not going to get killed. So you have a longer time to get a return on your investment. So I definitely see uh, the music industry changing a lot. And I say within the next two to three years, especially if um, FBG Duck Estate wins this lawsuit. Check out my original Chicago hood movie in the end screen, No Time to Play Fair.